In 1984, the US military was considering the problems connected with a new range of vehicles such as the M1 Abrams main battle tank and the M2 Bradley infantry fighting vehicle. As part of the evaluation of trends in future vehicles, a commission was formed to look into the potential for electric drive systems for a 40-ton tank and a 19.5-ton armoured personnel carrier or infantry fighting vehicle platform. The US Army's Tank Automotive Command issued a contract to General Dynamics Land Systems for this project to evaluate existing electric drive technologies to use in future vehicles. The evaluation led to the realisation that electric drive fighting vehicles were not only possible, but had some valuable features worth exploring, especially with regards to a series of heavy infantry fighting vehicle platforms. However, like so many other studies, this work faded away and the design work was abandoned. To this day, the M2 Bradley remains in service with a conventional power plant along with numerous other armoured vehicles in the US inventory. Despite spending billions of dollars, the US military has yet to capitalise on the potential of electric drive vehicles. The first phase of work on a future electric drive combat vehicle was a survey of existing technology. The second phase involved the generation of concept vehicles with electric drive. And the third and final phase was a parametric study and evaluation with selection of three recommended concepts for further consideration. General Dynamics had actually been looking into the potential of electric drive systems as early as 1981, producing electric drive concept vehicles for various other vehicle projects. It also had possession of an 8x8 wheeled 15 ton electric vehicle test bed, which it had bought in order to test and validate electric drive. The timetable for this project called for Phase 1 to be concluded by the end of 1984. In the end, the report on this phase was finished in July 1984 and then published in January 1985. By this time, the second phase was already underway, with an expected conclusion date in the latter half of 1985, and Phase 3 was to start in the middle of 1986 and run into the start of 1987. The potential of electric drive systems for tanks was recognised and experimented upon as far back as World War I. An electrical transmission offered the designer a significant freeing up of the internal layout of an armoured vehicle, as the drive motors did not have to be next to the engine, and it also provided the ability to deliver continuous, reliable power in preference to mechanical systems. This is primarily because an electrical drive system has far fewer moving parts and bearing surfaces than a mechanical system. An electrical system can also be smaller than the equivalent mechanical system, and smaller volume meant more internal volume in a vehicle for other things, or a reduction in the amount that needed to be protected by armour, thus leading to less weight too. Electrical transmissions are also quieter due to the absence of gearing and drive shafts and offer the obvious potential to provide electrical power for the vehicle's systems. 38 possible concepts for the 19.5 tonne and 40 tonne vehicles were considered over four basic vehicle considerations, these concept plans were submitted by Westinghouse, ACEC, Unique Mobility, Garrett, Jarrett and the University of Michigan. All of the options were to consider an automotive scheme for a baseline vehicle. The baseline vehicle was a departure from a rather large body of the M2 Bradley. The essential layout, however, was very conventional. Riding on six pairs of wheels attached to what appear to be suspension arms, it appears to have torsion bar suspension with each track running on these six wheels divided into two groups of three and supported on the top with a trio of return rollers. A driver sat in the front left with the power plant alongside on the right. Behind this was the fighting and troop space with a turret set slightly back from centre. The two-man turret carried all of the armament for the design, consisting of a single 50 caliber heavy machine gun with an elevation range between minus 15 and plus 30 degrees and 1,000 rounds of ammunition. On each side of the turret were a pair of Dragon anti-tank guided missile launchers with another four missiles stowed at the back of the turret. Due to the turret and the relatively small size of the vehicle, the troop space at the back was also small. Although only two men are shown in drawings of the vehicle, it's likely that another two would have been comfortably seated opposite for a troop space of four men, although it's hard to imagine how happy they would be if they knew they were sat on top of a 640 litre fuel tank. It's important to remember though that the vehicle shown in the drawings, while more than a mere doodle of a viable armoured personnel carrier, should only be taken as an illustration of a possible future APC. The power plant work could just as legitimately be refitted to another vehicle as the key part of the study was not this armoured personnel carrier per se, but a study to evaluate these power systems for AFV propulsion. With four main configurations being considered, the design task was simplified by the specification of the engines to be used. 
The 19 and a half ton vehicle would use the Cummins VTA 903T generating 500 horsepower. The engine would then drive generators to provide power to various configurations of motors, with the goal being a road speed of 45 miles per hour. Dimensions were set with a Datum concept vehicle with a hull height of 72 inches, an overall height of 96 inches, a distance of 150 inches from the centre of the front road wheel to the last road wheel, and a total length of 246 inches, which is about 6.25 metres. The tracks were to be 17.5 inches wide with a total vehicle width of 110 inches or 2.79 metres. Armament was to be concentrated on a small turret located centrally width-wise and just back from the centre of the vehicle. All of the 19.5 tonne concept vehicles used an engine forward arrangement, leaving a large space in the rear of the vehicle suitable for carrying troops or other payloads. Armament was also the same on all of the 19.5 tonne concepts. A single heavy machine gun in a small turret flanked on each side by anti-tank guided missile launchers. Five of the 19.5 tonne concept vehicles were eventually selected on the basis of an efficiency scoring system that assessed a variety of factors such as weight, volume, efficiency of system and technological ease. Despite it being a heavier system than the others, it was the Belgian ACEC system that was selected as being the best. However, the design team also recommended further development of the Jarrett system as it was received late in the assessment process and potentially could have been better than the ACEC. A production study was conducted on the ACEC concept to identify problems and costs. The 192 horsepower DC motor in the design was not an issue as it was already a well-established piece of technology. It had already been used experimentally on a Belgian armoured fighting vehicle called the ACEC Cobra several years before. Although the ACEC system had already been used on the Cobra some years beforehand, there were significant differences. The study had selected the 500 horsepower Cummins VTA 903T, whereas the Cobra used the 190 horsepower Cummins VT190. The Garrett designed 417 horsepower rare earth metal permanent magnet generator used in the concept study was a problem. The generator required strategic materials including samarium cobalt rare earth magnets and a nickel alloy called Inconel. Cobalt in particular was a material which was difficult to work with in manufacturing as it required special handling to prevent it from being damaged. The result was that the cost of the drive system, without considering the final drives and cooling, was estimated at US$19,500 per vehicle, with a projection that the drives for the planned 400 vehicles could cost over $165,000, which is about $400,000 in today's money. Although the 500 horsepower Cummins VTA 903T was selected for the purposes of the study, it was accepted that other engines were available. In the end though, other than the possibility of switching to a petrol turbine, the existing diesel engines were the only technology mature enough to be considered. Of the 38 possible options, three systems suitable for the 19.5 tonne vehicle were identified. Concept I-5 from the Belgian firm of ACEC came with the conventional direct current traction motor driven by a permanent magnet AC generator. The second was Concept I-10 from the firm of Garrett, which used its own AC permanent magnet drive. And finally, from the firm of Unique Mobility, was Concept IV-2, which used a dual path AC permanent magnet drive system. In conclusion, switching to an electrical transmission from a mechanical one could have provided several key benefits. It was more efficient, produced less heat through friction, and took up less than half the volume of the mechanical equivalent. Half the volume meant more space available inside for fuel, weapons and men, or just a smaller vehicle which would therefore need less armour and be lighter. With the transmission decoupled from the location of the engine, without the need for any drive shafts, the designers were free to make some radical layout changes if they wanted, but they did not do this for the concept in which the layout remained rather ordinary. This was perhaps the biggest failing of the study, as the vehicle shape and size were dictated from the start, meaning the single biggest freedom provided to the designers was gone. Instead, electric drive could only compete in terms of weight and volume, and perhaps it was this dictating the terms of the contest, which was the main factor in why it was not adopted. By working their way through the possible vehicle power options, the concept study team was able to make a clear choice. A relatively small diesel engine and the ACEC DC system were the most efficient and effective e-drive options for a new generation of vehicle in the 19.5 tonne class. Despite this, however, 
The idea was destined for obsolescence by the conventional diesel engine and mechanical powertrain on the M2 Bradley. The Belgians had made their ACEC motor-powered APC and even a light tank on the platform, but this American project fizzled out, and more than 30 years later, the idea of a diesel-electric-powered APC has yet to be exploited to its full potential. That's all for this video. Make sure to follow our website where we'll be releasing new articles regularly. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or Reddit, and if you use Discord, there's a link to our community server in the description. Also, likes, comments and subscriptions on YouTube are greatly appreciated. If you would like to help us to continue to develop and expand, also consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to help enhance and design new articles and features for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.